Yeah. Yeah. I've got time. Welcome back to the 20 Minute Gamer channel. I am your host, Nick, and I'm bringing some more Aliens Fireteam Elite content your way. Uh, hang out for a bit here with me because there's a few issues with the game I'd love to talk about things that are all over the community and um i guess i guess i'd love to see them change and i've been thinking about them here for the past couple of weeks really actually looking at them and, and trying to identify what um what do i like about the game what what don't i like i don't like every single game that i play i i, I love the game hell divers all right but uh let's be honest i don't like that we're all locked to the same screen i think that really sucks uh it makes being able to cover an area difficult and the fact that you have to be right on top of each other really irritates me i think um i don't i don't like that i don't like every single game okay i don't like everything about aliens fte either but um but i do love it in its base state uh you know, there's some people who have some pretty choice opinions about the content and the game, and, and that's, I mean, that's all right. You know, it's, uh, I, uh, you're entitled to your opinion. I'm not trying to change anybody's opinion with this either. I don't, uh, I don't want that to be perceived. I really just kind of want to talk about a couple of things. So, um, might be a long one. Grab some popcorn. I'll give you two minutes here. That wasn't two minutes, but we're, we're back. Uh, beautiful. All right. So, um, a couple of things, uh, Xenos, uh, some HUD changes, maybe, uh, AI strength, and then, um, just some, some general, general content things with that. Um, well, there's a lot to unpack here. Um, right. So the first one I want to jump into is probably the easiest, uh, and that is AI teammates. Robot hoes! Uh, gosh, there's um, there's there's really there's a lot to, to kind of uh, to kind of dig through here. Um, they. I have had the most entertaining experiences in playing with Alpha and Beta. Uh, harder difficulties. Let's be honest. Uh, they are. Uh, they are they are not that effective, uh, and I think that that is uh, putting it uh, pretty politely. Uh, they fucking suck. Emotional damage. Uh, they step in your way. They run into the heat of battle without any fear or consequence of what's going to happen. Um, but how do we make them better? How do we make the AI teammates better? What can we do? Uh, a lot of people have said, you know, let us outfit them. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, you know, let's give them guns. Let's give them better guns. The amount of coding and the amount of time that I expect the developers to put into uh, FTE synths, uh, alpha and beta, um, is unrealistic. All right. Uh, they are not, um, they, they are, they are, I, I am, I am not expecting the devs of Cold Iron Studios to spend hours upon hours to make alpha and beta, uh, hyper OP. All right. They are not Delta operators and Neither am I, but that's okay. Um, I think giving them better guns would help. Um, I'm not even saying, let me give them a Kramer. Let me give them a X-45. I'm not even saying that, but maybe if based on the difficulty level, they increase the base pulse rifle by a, by a bit... Uh, you know, maybe, maybe on insane difficulty, Alpha and Beta are rolling with a four-star pulse rifle, no attachments. Maybe on extreme difficulty, they are rolling with a four-star pulse rifle, and they have a, a couple of attachments. But it's, it's a basic build that Cold Iron institutes, right? I think that might help, okay? I, I think that it might help, and it might be beneficial to allow them to at least scale with the user. Because even though I know the devs are intending on making FTE the type of game where, hey, uh, quote unquote, it's better to play with friends. Yeah, yeah, no shit. It's always better to play with friends, but maybe I work the night shift, man. And maybe, maybe I work the night shift and, and I'm a chef and I get home at 2 a.m. and I'm really, I had a really, really bad service. I've had those types of days. And maybe instead of turning to a bottle and yelling at my kid who's crying now that I'm home, 
maybe you just give me better AI to run the game with uh, just by giving them better guns, by giving them more powerful guns. They, they, they would be much more effective. I know that they'd be more effective against runners. Let me deal with the drones. Let me deal with the warriors that come storming in, okay? Um, but uh, I don't know. Is that is that possible? Is that something they can code? Is that easy enough to code? I don't know. My other thought process with alpha and beta is... What about increasing their health by a certain ratio or a percentage, depending on the difficulty? Uh, you know, casual difficulty is, uh, you know, whatever it is. Standard is whatever it is. And then you get into insane and intense and extreme and uh, you, they get walked over. They get absolutely walked over. They don't dodge. Or if they do dodge, they, gosh, they're like a... They're like the Trade Federation robots, man. Like, I just half expect them to stop and stare at me and go, Roger, Roger. Roger, Roger. I, I think increasing their health, allowing them to chew in more damage would be helpful. Uh, I wonder if the problem with doing that, though, is I could lead them into an area and let them just be cannon fodder. Let them be meat shields. And that is going to go ahead and impact and prevent um, what the game's about, right? I mean, it's all it's a horde shooter. Uh, you know, it's not like it is AVP or AVP2. I mean, those were really, really gripping, intense games. And when your motion detector went off, it was almost too late in those games. Um... So I, I don't know. Maybe maybe health is a bad idea. Maybe it's a good idea. Maybe it's the right way to go. Give them more. Uh, give them more, more HP. They'll chew up more damage. They'll stay in the fight longer. Uh, they heal themselves for the most part, right? I mean, you can heal them if you want to waste the med pack. But I mean, if you really need to waste that med pack, sure, go for it. But we would then also have to adjust the the health, the med packs, right? The med packs would have to heal at a uh, at an added ratio at an added percentage and I'm like I said I'm not a coder I don't uh, I don't understand how developmental processes work man I just I just play the games okay so um, maybe maybe that's not realistic maybe that's not what they want to do but they definitely have to pander and they do have to appeal to a portion of the user base and I think that it would be smart for them to consider the effectiveness of alpha and beta because even if you're running with someone else, even if you take away the factor that right now the Lancer build's been out for less than a month and it's still really, really hard to find people to play with. Everyone played for a week, they maxed out their Lancer and they're not playing again. That content has been... Uh, has been exhausted and um i'm still playing i'm still out there i still log on and uh, i wish that i could find people to play i don't like being in quick play or i don't like being in a mission and uh and waiting for 15 minutes in order to see uh in order to see someone come through so uh they definitely have to do something with alpha and beta because right now that portion of the game is suffering even when i get one person it's hard to want to go into ready on insane with one person and alpha or beta because they're not going to hold their own uh so that's that's got to change all right so the next topic i'm calling xenomorphs and um I've got to pace myself here because there's a lot to unpack, but there's also not a lot to unpack, right? I've got three main issues, two main issues, and then one bleeds into a uh, uh, my, my third topic, right? So I've got the Xenomorphs in general, right? But I've got swarms, spawn points, and then pushing the mission, okay? Um, the the Xenos, uh, th the, the durability of the Xenomorphs... Um, Needs to be adjusted, I think. Uh, I, I believe that um, that even on the harder difficulties, runners should not be as hard as they are. I think, if anything, the runners stay ridiculously basic uh, and uh, as easy to smoke on the lower difficulties, uh, excuse me, as easy to smoke on the higher difficulties as they are on the lower difficulties, okay? Um, the reason I feel that is because the swarm should be bigger. Uh... I mean, I mean, it's one of two things. 
Either the swarms are, are bigger, okay, and the runners have less HP, or the swarms are smaller, and the runners have higher HP. But then, just take the runners out and have us fight warriors and drones, right? Like, um, the combat experience needs to be more gripping, it needs to be more harrowing, it needs to be more frightening, you know? You, you, need, you need that in these types of games. I think about AVP and AVP2. I mean, if you were bothering to look at your your motion detector, you were probably already dead before you even saw where the alien was. I mean, it was a a frightening experience in AVP. I played that game in the summer, high noon, all the windows open, and the lights on, man. I didn't play that game in the dark. Are you kidding me? Spawn points are kind of affecting the swarms as well, but spawn points, we need more of them or less of them. Like, this is another one of those coin, coin flips. Uh, it's just, it's too easy to know where the spawn points are going to be. Uh, I don't necessarily think that's bad, okay? Like, I don't think that's bad. You're playing so far in a game, and you're like, oh, you know, something should happen by now. And, yeah, okay, yeah, you, you're right. So, here's a spawn point. But, um... I think it's just, it's too easy right now to identify where the spawn points are going to happen. And then we have these vents that fall down. And the vents get me every single time. I'm not going to lie to you. The vents get me every time. But nothing ever happens. <laughs> every single time. Nothing, nothing happens, okay? Um, they need to do something to engage... The, the fearfulness and the hopelessness of what the Marines do and how the Marines come in contact with the Xenos. On the harder difficulties, I would love to see them copy uh, uh, something of the effect where um, World War Z, if any of you have played that game, um, there is on the harder difficulty, when you come across ammo points, if there's a gunslinger and if there's a medic and there is a slasher on your team in World War Z, I am going to ask the slasher to not take ammo out of that bin because it's limited versus the gunslinger whose whole purpose is guns and maybe the medic who needs to stay alive to take care of everybody. But the slasher is a melee character. I would love to see something implemented like that in Aliens Fireteam Elite where the harder difficulties limit the amount of ammo that's given in the refill points. Every single engagement to me should leave you breathless in regards to, wow, I can't believe I, I, I only have this much ammo left. Fine, I only have 12 bullets. So you're going to have to share. I've had a couple of missions where um, I've poorly outfitted my characters and using the heavy pulse rifle and using some submachine guns, you really chew through ammo. And you're left with nothing. You're left with pressing the three on your keypad or if you're an Xbox or PlayStation user, whatever it takes to get that pistol that has infinite ammo. And you're using that. You're actually using that. And I... I wish that there were more moments like that. I wish there were more moments where in communicating with your team, you knew that one of you wasn't getting kills because you desperately needed one person to just be conscientious of how much ammo they had left. All right, the next score I probably want to settle is the content argument. Um, now, this isn't an MMO. It's not like The Division, right? Division 2, yeah, they're the exact same missions with maybe different parameters. But um, that open world aspect breaks those missions up, right? We don't have that. So the content has to come in the form of the, uh, the game modes. Currently we've got Horde, we've got Point Defense, and I'd like to add a third. Um, my third recommendation would be one called Extraction. Now, the basis of Extraction is, is pretty, pretty simple, right? A uh, team of three rolls in. Maybe it's a terraforming facility or a mining facility. I'll leave that up to the, to the devs. With whatever lore, whatever direction that they're rolling in, uh, 
continue with that. I don't have any, um, I don't have any perspective uh, on that whatsoever. I'm not privy to the information that they have. Um, the objective is basically to activate some generators and to recover some data. So the team steps into a command room uh, and they find the missing data, okay? Uh, Herrera says, you know, all right, Marines, you know, hold down the fort while Cynthia helps us decode or hold down the fort while someone helps us decode this message. Boom. Instantly, we're put into a hold off the horde sort of a uh, hold off the horde sort of situation. Um, you know, maybe it's a minute, maybe it's two minutes. And she, you know, she gets back on comms. Uh, you got Zenos incoming. Um, you know, give us, give us a minute, give us two minutes. So the data basically tells Herrera something about the facility and why it was abandoned. Obviously, the Zenos are a part of that as well. Um, Maybe Herrera comes in and says, you know, uh, it turns out that there was a faulty generator. Uh, so they couldn't keep everything powered. So they couldn't keep uh, blast doors closed. They were overrun by the Xenos. Um, we're going to go ahead and use that to our advantage. We can't repair this. We can't do anything with it. So she says, you know, Marines, you know, this could be a one-way trip. Uh, we didn't know. Sorry. But we need you to split up and we need you to get to the generator controls, right? So we head off to a uh, we head off to a command room uh, or a different command room, and um, she says, you know, I need you to hold the switches down so the rods remain in the core. Uh, you know, it's going to force the reactor to overload, o overload and explode. Uh, but we can't keep this settlement, and, and it's it's lost. We we've lost this one. Uh, so the team splits. Um, I'd like to see a, a different type of gameplay. The team splits. One person goes into a side room to stay in the command room. The minute that one person goes into the side room, it activates, boom, a door shuts. It, the door won't shut if there's two people in there. I know they have ways of coding switches in, in that way. If two persons, if two packs are in the room, the door stays open and the objective can't be completed, right? Um... But basically, the swarm is uh, the swarm is going to happen until uh, until they're split. So uh, there's going to be a swarm. Um, once that uh, once those doors close, the doors close for everybody. Um, the doors are shut. The Xenos are effectively held off uh, for a little bit. The switches are held down. One of the doors breaks. Okay, Xenos are free to start coming in through that uh, through that entryway. Okay. Um, uh, so the single person holds down uh, a switch, and uh, another person in the main command module is holding down their switch. Uh, no stupid shit either. No drones, no warriors, runners, okay? Maybe, maybe a spitter. Uh, but uh, I'm really thinking just just runners, okay? I don't want to make this overcomplicated because you now have one person who's in a room by themselves, and now you've got one person who is the sole person um, protecting the other marine holding down a switch um the reactor starts to blow in certain areas the walkway where the xenos were coming from explodes swarm stops switches are released we move on uh basically herrera then says you know all right you three get out of there you're gonna have to find a way to link back up and it's not gonna be a complicated thing doors are gonna open up on either side and there's just gonna be what two to three minutes of running through some hallways engaging small packs small small packs i'm talking five maybe ten at the most for the single person but we don't want to make this over complicated because you have to consider the harder difficulties one person may think that they're they're hot shit and really gung-ho and uh there's a strong possibility that uh, that they are not um uh, so she then tells us, you know, look, there's a one more switch you have to flip together uh, to, to get out of there. It's an override that releases the lockdown from the reactor overload. Cool. All right. Great. Uh, another uh, another opportunity to uh, um, to play with some switches, uh, deal with some swarms in, in a way. The doors open up for the Marines. They link back up. Uh, they make their way down the corridors together, engaging Xenos as they come. So all three packs are back together. One more room puts them looking down three hallways two switches switches have to be held at the same time again one marine locks down the corridors uh, obviously i mean all three can right you can put up your sentries you can put up your mines uh your phosphorus mines you can put up your cryo uh your cryostasis uh so this sequence finishes and it's basically a race to the finish line and xenos are coming out of the walls all over the place a few locks are fused and need to be cut uh as as they're being cut obviously then more xenos attack you're getting attacked from the front. You're getting attacked from the rear. You're, you're, the 
pincher maneuvers are happening. Herrera get, basically gets on the comps and says something like, you know, don't bother engaging them all. You know, just get out of there. They're not going to stop. There's hundreds. Just get out. She's panicked, right? Um, you know, maybe she even says, you know, we need another team on standby. We're going to lose them. Cut. And then the, the radio cuts. Like, maybe you overhear her where you shouldn't, right? Um, eventually, you uh, you get to an extraction zone. A, uh, a drop ship is on the way. A drop ship is coming. It's uh, it's another opportunity to kind of uh, uh, to kind of hold off and, and deal with a, deal with an extraction, um, and um, and that would be it. I would like to see a mission like that. I would like to see a mission where the objective isn't really necessarily to uh, to engage the Xenos, but it's to get out of there as soon as possible. Um, I I might even say that. Uh, if you reach certain times, you know, if she's like, you know, hey, listen, I need you to get here. You've got 30 seconds to get to this location. Run, you know, get to that location. If one of you gets to that location, it'll trigger positively. If none of you get to that location in that period of time, it'll trigger negatively. You know, maybe she says, I need you to get here by this time. Okay, boom, we're there. Awesome. All right. Well, you know, you can go this way. You can go that way. Uh, if you miss it, hey, listen, uh, you didn't get there in time. That section is now... Uh, that section's now blowing up. I need you to go this other route. And it's longer, and it's going to cause you to engage more. I'd, al I'd also like to see less less ammo refill points along that period, right? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, let me know what you think. Maybe I'm way off base here. Maybe this kind of a gameplay wouldn't be exciting. But I like the aspect that it would turn it into more of a choose-your-own-adventure. How fast do you and your team want to go? Uh, maybe at the end of the mission there would be perks. Hey, listen, you made you made three of the four checkpoints in time allotted. You're rewarded X amount of of, of XP, right? You're you're allotted this per, uh, additional percentage of XP, or you made zero of the four, so you get no additional experience. Um, I think that that might um, might help people not necessarily be uh, speed running, okay, but it would help people communicate more and if one person is pinned down or feels like they're getting engaged all people have to help engage there's way too many times where others just kind of run ahead and they speed run in the missions and christ you know i think i'm guilty of that too but um i don't know uh let me know um i would uh, i would love to hear other ideas that all of you have in regards to the game and in regards to the additional content that you'd like to see outside of just additional campaign missions. I think that we all might like to see additional campaign missions, but I would love to hear what other types of mission sets you'd love to see. All right, and the final topic I guess I kind of wanted to bring up is maybe just a me thing. So it's really more of a bonus discussion than it is necessarily something I've seen within the community, and that's cleaning up the heads-up display. Uh, here we are playing, and the HUD is extremely busy, all right? We estimate we can sell up to 80% of an individual's visual field before inducing seizures. I've got motion detector in the lower left, all of my gear, uh, excuse me, motion detector in the lower right, all my gear in the lower left. Uh, I mean, it's it's a busy screen, and then smack dab in the center, I've got my perk counter, my perk uh, um, uh, benefit as well. So uh, I would like to actually just take that bar, drop it down, uh, expand its size a little bit, and then take all of my weapon details and um, plug them along a line in that bar. Uh, I, I also don't even think that. I also don't even think that I need my weapon icons. I know that the weapon icons are there to show you have 146 rounds left in the uh, heavy pulse. You have 500 rounds left in your uh, in your flechette uh, SMG, and I get that. I really appreciate the effort that went into creating that. But I know what weapon I brought. I don't need an icon for it. Um, and I think that we could do a better job of cleaning up the ammo counters uh, i think that it's just a lot of busyness and i don't necessarily know if it's relevant um very few times have i looked down there to actually care about how much ammo i have left or how much ammo i have 
in my uh, in my magazine. Okay, um, as far as uh, as far as the motion detector, I guess it's okay where it is, but it also could be overlaid uh, right underneath the um, right underneath the dude. Um, so I'm jumping into my gunner build here real quick, and by no means whatsoever is this fleshed out. I am not a coder. This is all just text work, but what I've done is, pulling up the rifle, I've just done a basic overlay of the ammo counter, right? I mean, I mean, that doesn't look horrible, right? I mean, it's not ugly, it's not atrocious. You could even add the ammo counter as well as the remaining ammunition onto it, right? Uh, you know, stack it like that. Um... It also, it works with other rifles, and and this isn't fleshed out on my end. This is all just a, an idea, right? This is all just a concept. Would this work? Would this be something anyone would even want, right? I would like it because I feel like it would be a lot more immersive. Um, I think that it would be more like, and I, I don't want to copy every game under the sun, but, I mean, it would be a lot more like a your dead space right so i don't know that's uh that's just my thought i was interested in providing some um some details about how i would change the hud i was also interested in talking about how could we actually make alpha and beta better uh and uh, and all the other uh, topics as well and this mission actually was great because i officially maxed out my lancer 100 percent. so um Anyway, I am going to go ahead and let everyone go here. I do appreciate you all joining me on this discussion. I know it was a little bit of a long video, and I am sorry about that. I do try to make sure that the videos are not tremendously long. Uh, that's just not what uh, that's not what this channel is meant to uh, meant to imbue. Okay, so. I will see you all on the next one, and please drop a comment down below, like and subscribe. But drop a comment down below. Let me know if I'm completely off base on all of this, any of this. Um, is this something that Cold Iron Studios would even like to hear from us? I know they like to hear from the community. So, um, But anyways, yeah, I will catch you on the next one. Nick out.